I'm Sandy Sims with SDS Digital. This video is part one of a series on my method of conception, design, and construction of a prototype module. Everyone has a different method. This one works for me. I've had quite a few people ask how I can go from an idea to a working prototype in such a short amount of time. This is generally how I do it. First I come up with a rough drawing, sometimes on paper, sometimes drawn in the computer. This time it's the latter. After playing around with some ideas on layouts, I have something to port into my favorite 3D program, Maya. Most people use CAD. I use Maya as I know it so well. So this module is to be a true granular synthesizer, but in the compact format of, of the previous Accord series modules at 8 HP. I am using the prototype layout of the Sequoral model as a template because much of it is the same layout, especially the lower jacks grid. This is to save time and avoid reinventing the wheel. I did do some component measurements though to properly space the OLED display screen and encoders, but because it's a prototype design only, making it super precise is just a waste of time. Because the panel is only two millimeters thick, in plastic it will need some reinforcing like this. I checked the print against the Sequoral panel and it's pretty close. Once the 3D print is complete, I want to have a nice graphic so it's presentable for possible development videos in the future. I still use Macromedia Flash to design vector graphics, even though Flash has been erased from existence in the online world for quite a while now. Once finished, the graphic is printed on paper, which is then clear coated both sides and glued to the smooth panel face with white vinyl spray paint, allowed to dry to the point of still being tacky. As it's slower to dry, vinyl paint acts as a good interface and leaves no goopy film, which is important for the next step, filing out the holes. Using a fine flat file to remove the excess paper is the best way, then the smaller files can be used for the panel holes. I have to use a sharp new blade, so it's important to remove any protection oil from the blade. All holes should be poked through with a knife first, then carefully filed. It's important to cut the holes in a way that the pressure won't tear the paper away from the panel. Holes that will have edges covered by nuts can be coarsely filed, but expose holes like for LEDs, buttons, and the OLED window, must be filed out carefully. The OLED windows inside edges must be painted with acrylic black paint to uh, make the frame continuous into the opening. A 
I like to spin a diamond cone bit in the LED holes to remove any uneven edges because they will show. Once everything is filed to perfection, a final spray of clear coat will finish it and reinforce all the edges. The next step is to make a PC board to hold and connect the panel components to the motherboard. Once again I am using Maya to design a PCB drilling template, but first I am making a spacer frame for the encoders. Now for the PCB template. This part is always a bit tricky as one must have a rough idea of the space the motherboard will require and where to place the headers. By simply referring to uh, previous 3.5 millimeter jack footprints done in the PCB CAD from previous modules, I can get the offset for the jack pins and place them. LEDs and the switches are easy, but getting the exact position for the OLEDs pins took a fair bit of measurement and verification. There is basically no wiggle room there. The large hole for the SD card must be traced to cut as well. Sometimes I will reuse the panel PCB template to drill for the headers in the motherboard, but sometimes I need to make a separate template if using a breakout or development board for the processor. Lastly, the header positions are decided. They must be in a convenient position to run traces or wires to components, but also offer some support. More often than not, these header positions will remain through to the final product as they depend on the panel face, which probably won't change much. Now that the template is complete, it's time to export it for the print. The 3D print is only to be one millimeter thick which is all that is required, really, to act as a guide. Some holes are large, so I can test fit some components before sacrificing a PC board material to the drill. The bigger holes mean a bit of eyeballing with the whole guide punch, but no big deal. Now to drill. I do have a couple of different CNC machines, but I still find this method to be quicker overall. This handy little Dremel drill press has a lot of use over the years, and prevents breaking the little drill bits as there is very little flexing to it. Unfortunately, I still can't use CNC drill bits with this. It flexes enough to break them continuously. Anyway, my hand is the CNC steering mechanism and it only takes a few minutes. Did a test fit with the encoders. So far, so good. Now it's time to draw in some traces. I have become lazy with routing over the years, as good quality fine wire does about the same job, but I will attempt to reduce the use of said wire as much as possible, as long as it's not taking more than an hour to do so. I use Stettler or Sharpie super fine tip pens, or laundry pens, and more recently fine tipped acrylic pens for pads. By habit I will fill open areas of copper usually with test pads or ground plane. This is to reduce the use of ferric chloride etchant, which I will reuse over and over. I see videos of people dumping it after one use. How unenvironmentally wasteful of them. I have found that I can make 15 to 20 boards of this size with only one cup of the etchant. It's very quick if the etchant is warmed up. This ferret chloride only has been used once before, so it took less than a minute to do this. Now it's time to assemble the panel board. The three encoders are fiducial, along with the bottom jacks, which will cause alignment as they are placed.
before soldering, the face panel is used to align the jacks, of course. Now for the push buttons and LEDs. Because this is single-sided board, the headers must only penetrate the PC board a little bit. Then they can be soldered from the surface and still have some strength to stand up. The male headers need to be held by a female while soldering though, as the pins could fall out of alignment when the plastic starts to melt. This is true even with manufactured PC boards. The full-size SD card socket meant the slot had to be cut a bit wider and part of the support frame dremeled out. If this module ever makes it to the final design phase, I think using a micro SD might be a better choice. Then an extra button could be next to it as well. The display has been mounted. I forgot to start recording for that, but it was a good fit once the pins were angled properly. <laughs> Well, there it is. The panel for the Accord Migraine Synth prototype is complete. Stay tuned for the second part of this project, which will happen next time I need a break from all the other ongoing projects I'm working on. I hope you enjoyed this peek into my process. Thanks for watching.